What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome to EA Respond to the community. That is right, they have dropped a bomb of knowledge on us and we're going to talk about it today. Now this is probably going to go into be a 10, 15, 20 minute video so uh, go get yourselves a cup of tea, a couple of biscuits and stick FIFA on because even though we complain a lot about FIFA and we hate some of the things EA do, we still love FIFA and that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. So yeah, drop a like. Drop a like. Let's get 9,000 likes. Um, EA tweeted out about um, uh, FIFA Ultimate Team and the transfer market. And we're going to talk briefly about some of the points. We're going to ignore some of the points. We're going to talk about some of the points. There is some good things in this. Not going to lie. There is some good things in this. And there is some bad things in this. Now, what I want you guys to remember is that I'm talking to you not as a YouTuber. Not as a coins promoter or a person who does or does not have coins. I'm talking to you as a consumer, as a guy who also loves to play FIFA, who spends a lot of his time on FIFA and absolutely loves this game mode and wants this game mode to be the best it can be. Um, I do try and say as unbiased as possible during these times and look at things from all angles and that's what we're going to do. So first of all guys, just to read through the page that I'm going to leave a link in the description and have on the screen anyway, it says FIFA Ultimate Team should be fair and fun for every player. That's why we've implemented a lot of changes to foot in the past several weeks and I had to laugh straight away there. Like I said, I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible, right? But that's why we, that's why we have implemented a lot of changes to foot because they want it to be fun and fair for every player. No, they don't. No, they don't. They want you to buy as many goddamn FIFA points as your money will allow you. They don't give a shit if it's fun. They don't give a shit if it's fair. They want to sell FIFA points. If they wanted to make it fair, they would remove FIFA points because that's fair. Then it comes down to the ability to actually play the game. Not necessarily just play the game, but play the markets, play getting packed. Like it would, it would literally be about the game. Making it fun and fair for everyone isn't by removing coin sponsors, it's by removing any aspect of pay to advance, pay to win, or pay to play. Every aspect. So within the first sentence, I was kind of like, this, this is going to be a good read. But it actually did turn out to be a good read. Um, in the past several weeks, including our decision to make the transfer market inaccessible via the web app and companion app and the introduction of price ranges within the transfer market. Believe it or not, I didn't fast forward myself there. I can just read and speak that fast. Holy shit. What are we trying to achieve with these changes? It's simple. We want to keep the game fair and secure for everyone and ensure a level playing field for all foot fans. Again, I had to stop reading there. Ensure a level playing field. If I've got a thousand pounds of accessible cash that I can just do anything with, and you watching have got one pound of accessible cash that you can do everything, anything with, and we're both huge FIFA fans, and you buy one pound's worth of FIFA points, which is about 100 FIFA points and gets you a 5k pack, and I buy a thousand pounds worth of FIFA points, how is that fair? How is that fair? How are you trying to ensure the game is fair when you sell a product that allows people to have more access and better starts, stats, players, etc. in the game. How is that exactly fair? To accomplish this, we have to root out the activities of coin farmers and cheaters who are harming your experience with the game. I've got to be honest again, I've actually, it's, it's done nothing but enhance my experience of the game. Having uh, coins, being able to buy coins, it's done nothing but enhance my experience. I promise you that. These exploiters generate coins illegitimately in the foot economy through the use of bots and phishing scams. I'm sorry, but a phishing scam is not illegitimate coins. A phishing scam is when someone's like, hey, sign up here and get a billion free coins. And what you do is you put in your username, your password, your security question, your email, and then they steal all your shit and sell it on. That's not illegitimate coins. That's, that's stealing legitimate coins and selling them on. That's not illegitimate coins. That's legitimate coins. The use of bots... Yes, that's, again, arguably non-illegitimate coins. The only distributor of coins in this whole game is EA. They're not coming from other games, they're not coming from other ways. EA are the sole distributor of coins, which means no coin in FIFA is illegitimate. Every coin is earned through the game's mechanics. The illegitimacy is within the game mechanics, not within the coins themselves. You can excuse them regarding the bots and the coin with the games because, okay, whilst it's not illegitimate, it's, a, it's an okay way to put the phrase. Creating a flood of fraudulent in-game currency, again, debatable, and driving up the cost of players on the transfer market. That's where I agree. It did drive up the cost of players on the transfer market. Um, 
There wasn't a problem too much at the start of this FIFA, even all the way up to Team of the Year. Then the Chinese got involved and they started farming coins like you wouldn't believe. They cracked a new code to glitch coins and that's why coins became so cheap, which in turn flooded the market. Which is why I've always been arguing for them to fix the glitch, because you fix the glitch and the coin sites are back to uh, uh, auto traders to try and trade to get coins. They're back to uh, like regular methods that are used, um, like pack glitches through um, like the uh, when you get a new fee like when you sign on to FIFA 15 and you've played the FIFA for like previous years, the bonus packs and stuff like that. That's how they used to generate the coins. Now the Chinese are doing it the way they're doing it with the match glitch, and there's like billions upon billions of coins, and it's caused a massive stir. So yes. If you just remove the coin glitch, the in hyperinflation would immediately stop. And we've seen that with the massive reduction of player prices used with the price ranges. This inflation fundamentally damages the economy. Again, it's debatable. For the average, I'm not spending any money on FIFA user, yeah, I agree. But that average user is fucked by anyone who uses FIFA points anyway. So again, it's debatable, but we're not gonna argue that point. Making top players unattainable for the vast majority of foot fans who are not exploiting the system and who simply want to play the right way. I'm sorry, but I play a lot of FIFA and every game I come up against, it's a fucking super team. So the top players aren't unattainable because of coin glitches, bots and uh, coin sellers. They are more attainable because it's a much, much better uh, alternative than spending hundreds if not thousands of pounds on FIFA points to get yourself in for Michael Carrick. I'm sorry, but coins were a much better alternative. If they weren't, they wouldn't be so successful. So don't try and pass the blame onto the coin stuff. Okay, coins have had a massive impact in the game. Whether it's been negative or positive is seen differently from each side of the coin retrospectively, no pun intended. Um, some people absolutely loved coin sellers because it helped them buy players that they couldn't afford because FIFA points were too expensive. And then there's some people that hate it because it drove up the play price of players when they play legitimately and it made them unattainable for that specific person. So there are two sides to the coin here. Um, since implementing these changes, we're seeing positive signs of restoring balance to the foot economy and mi mitigating some of the negative effects of the exploitation within the game. Again, this is a positive factor. Yes, we are seeing some good progress in the uh, foot economy. A lot of player prices are coming down. There's still issues with trying to sell and possibly trying to buy players, but the foot economy is getting better. I can't disagree with that. Uh, they are also mitigating the negative effects of exploiting exploitation within the game. I argue that. Um, I said on stream today, what they've done by putting in like this match, uh, match limit, I think it's like 75 matches a day, is allow the Chinese to go from having 100 consoles, playing 1,000 games per day, making X amount of coins, to having to change to have 1,000 consoles playing 100 games a day and still generating X amount of coins. There's no lack of coins. There's no coin loss. They just have. It's just. They just have to do it more times, which is ridiculous. If you go to your leaderboard right now and go to the match coins earned and change it to the last seven days, look at the top 100. I guarantee you there is not one legitimate account in there. And the reason why there's not one legitimate account in there is because these bots and these scams and these glitches are still in full effect. It's just more difficult to move the coins from one account to another. We're also delivering on our responsibility to provide you with a safe place to play. <laughs> a safe place to play. All right, we don't give out your details. We continue to invest in security tools and pr promise to continue to find the right ways to fend off coin sellers and farmers who are hurting the game. Again, debatable, but from EA's perspective, they're not doing it because they're hurting the game. They're doing it because they're hurting EA's pockets. They're doing it because when you buy coins, guess what you don't buy? You don't buy FIFA points. When you don't buy FIFA points, it hurts EA. It doesn't just hurt them in their heart, it hurts them in their wallets. Um, which is all, and then it says we impose the daily limit on matches, which has also had a positive effect in stopping coin farmers from generating illegitimate coins. No, it hasn't. But we have more work to do. Yes, you do. And that's why I think price ranges is irrelevant because the, they will always find a way around it. And then it says, here's an update on the next actions we were taking considering the in including new changes to price ranges as well as the status of the web and companion apps. And it talks about the web app and they are looking to get the web app and companion app back online. Um, I fear when the web and companion app comes back online because I hear through the grapevine for a lot of people that they already have um, auto systems in place for when the new when the web app comes back on. They've created new stuff that breaks anything EA have got. 
Um, and, and it would be a shame if the Web and Companion app were to never come back for transfers because of this. Uh, it, it would be a huge issue, again, not from a coin side of things, not from a YouTube side of things, from a player side of things who use the web app quite a lot uh, for legitimate reasons. It would be very, very sad if they never bring the web app and companion app back due to the coin situation here. It would be, a sa it would be sad. Um, then it goes on to talk about price ranges. Since the introduction of price ranges, we've already made more than 650 adjustments to price ranging with a focus on the highest valuable players of the foot economy. The introduction of price ranges has helped restrict the illegitimate coin transfers in the foot transfer market and balance player item prices so to reflect the current marketplace. But finding that right balance will take some time. We have a team dedicated to finding that balance. So one thing I wanted to talk about was um, the fact that it doesn't matter if you find the right balance or not because the market should, should not be uh, controlled. It should not be you shouldn't be pigeonholed. I understand that if you go back to normal, it's easy to trade coins, but that's where I come back into, you need to fix the main problem. Because by pigeonholing people with what they can do in the market, you might as well not have a market. You might as well buy from and sell to your players from EA. You pack a hazard, his discard price might as well just be what his lowest bin is because EA have set those ranges. You, you have no choice or no control in what you think is a value of a player. If you pack Hazard and he's selling for 250, but you think, no, I don't think Hazard's worth 250,000 coins. I think he's worth 400,000 coins, or I think he's worth 100,000 coins. You can't sell him for what you truly believe he's worth. And whilst that will stop some people from accidentally listing for the wrong prices, that's a minimal amount of people that make those mistakes compared to a maximum amount of people. Sometimes when I get a player, I get Hazard. I want to sell him straight away to open more packs, so I list him 50k under average market price. Can't do that anymore, can't get that quick sale anymore, can't get rid of these players just for 10% or 20% less anymore because of how EA have controlled the market. I don't think that's acceptable. I think what would be acceptable would be EA leaving the market as it is and fixing the issue that's at hand. Um, once again with the market, we're, we're talking about price ranges. They, they want to keep up to date on the price ranges, right? So if if Lam is selling for 15,000 or his buy now minimum is 15,000 he doesn't sell, they're going to reduce his price. If he doesn't sell for 12,000, they're going to reduce his price. If he doesn't sell for 10,000, they're going to reduce his price. But how long? If you're waiting two or three days every time to do this, you are seriously hurting your consumer, seriously hurting them because they're going to get tired of waiting to sell players for the small amount of coins that they're gonna get just to build a new team, they're gonna find other things to do in the meantime. In the same vein, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, second informer's impact, you can't find him, he's not on the market. You cannot physically buy him, which again is gonna harm the consumer because you put these price ranges in. The only thing that would be acceptable is if you had a really, really, really up-to-date, accurate version of what's happening in the market. So if for two hours, Lam doesn't sell at minimum price, bring his price down yeah you'd have to have a team in very very good order to to produce something like that but again it poses a problem that if that's the case if you start doing it daily or half daily or you know very very regularly the coin sites the coin farmers and the coin glitchers are going to pick a player and manipulate his price to whatever they want it to be to help suit their needs which again kind of negates the fact of of of, of movable price ranges if again, for example, you've got say Di Maria who's going for 150 to 200k and he's just not selling, not selling. All of a sudden, the coin guys might be like, right, let's buy all the Di Marias, let's push his price up to 300. So then they they bought them all for 150s because they're not selling. Now they're selling. Now they're selling. The price range goes up more and up more. They've now made a big margin and they can trade the coins through that big margin. Doesn't really work. It's definitely more difficult for the coin guys and more hassle for the coin guys but it hasn't stopped them. You can go to thefootshop.com right now and Foot Galaxy, the pack site, they're both up and running. Why are they up and running? Because this hasn't fixed the issue. It's made it more difficult. It's made it more timely. It's made it less effective in terms of the actual money that they're making as a business, but it hasn't stopped it, which means all this hassle through price ranges has been for no effect. And it will be the same in FIFA 16, like I've always said, if they don't fix the underlying issue and they put price ranges in from the start of FIFA 16, okay, Ronaldo will be cheap. Ronaldo might be a million coins or 1.5 million coins. He might be cheaper than he's ever been for four years. He might be attainable if you play and play and play and trade a bit and get really lucky in a few packs and spend a couple thousand FIFA points instead of a couple hundred thousand or a million FIFA points, you'll be able to get Ronaldo. But 
it still won't change the fact that somebody else can just go and buy coins and then buy Ronaldo. You're still going to see a lot of Ronaldos. And, and if, if they bring Ronaldo's price down so much to the point where he's easily, easily attainable and coin sites are still in effect, that Ronaldo is going to disappear from the market because he's going to be so cheap that people are going to buy coins, buy him, and then EA are going to move the price band up because there's none of him on the market. And it's going to still shift the price bands to the point where you might as well have just had an open market. It would have, it, all you're doing is prolonging the inevitable. You're not fixing the issue. You're not resolving the coin glitch. You're not helping the consumer. All you're really doing is making sure you make more money by selling more FIFA points. There's nothing to do with the consumer. Um, the web and companion apps, again, we removed the, the access to transfer market from the web and companion apps for maintenance on February the 13th for reasons including the urgent need to cut off the fraudulent activity that's been occurring on those apps. These apps became, became one of the main methods for coin sellers and farmers to use, move, use to move coins quickly throughout the foot economy. By closing transfer market access from the apps, our goals were to slow down the coin selling transaction in order to bring stability to the foot item prices locate and ban coin seller accounts and increase the security and stability of the apps. So again, there are some good points in there. Increasing stability and security apps is fantastic. Banning the coin sellers is fantastic, but slowing down coin selling transactions is not something that you should be looking to do. You shouldn't be looking to slow it down. You should be looking to stop it completely because your whole point is you want to make it fair outside of FIFA points to the consumer. Having it running slowly is just as unfair as having it running fast. It, it doesn't change anything. Um, there are a lot of questions asked and then it takes us on to the next page. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the next page. There, there, I'm gonna talk, talk briefly about this. So there were a whole bunch of questions asked. Um, what are the benefits to price ranges? What did you decide to implement price ranges in the middle of foot 15? Why do you need to have a minimum on price ranges? Why can't I find players on a transfer market? We've talked about a lot of this through what I've talked about already and why is it so hard to sell players, etc., etc. One of the biggest things that I think might be a problem next year if this is implemented, if price ranges are implemented, is that EA can start afresh. So they can put players into the market themselves. Uh, you'll see a lot right now, EA are giving out 6,000 free tradable players through this foot birthday week. And you're seeing like 99 Ronaldos created today going on the market. So they can do that whenever they want, right? If once again, EA drop it, it, like EA come to the point where it's like, okay, so there's not enough Ronaldo's on the market because he's too cheap, but we don't want to increase the price band because that means the coin sellers are winning. Let's put another 50 or 100 Ronaldo's on the market. It's going to come to a point where Ronaldo will be worthless because there'll be so many of him. Everyone will have him and he will be absolutely worthless. If they start pumping players into the market themselves instead of what came out of packs, the supply and demand is going to be outweighed to the point where there is no demand and there is too much supply and every player's price will be at rock bottom which will also be pointless not only for the consumer although it'd be nice for everyone to be able to play with every player they wanted because they're also cheap but it would be so bad for ea because they won't sell fifa points which is their biggest concern here their primary concern is can we or can we not sell more fifa points it's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about the coin guys, it's about holy shit, we're, we're not selling as much FIFA points as we thought, 10 million a day on FIFA points is not enough money, we need to, uh, that's that's a stat by the way, 10 million a day they make on FIFA points according to uh, some stats that I read on Twitter the other day, um, 10 million dollars a day on FIFA points, crazy amounts of money, but that's all they want, they just want your you to, to, to spend the money. The rest of the questions are very interesting, um, I suggest you guys go and read them because if I still talk about them now, we're going to be end up talking for a 20 to 25 minute video or a 30 minute video and uh, I haven't done one of those in a long time, but yeah, so I'll leave the two links that you're going to need in the description below, uh, I would have put some of the stuff on the screen as well for you guys to see, um, again, I hope you realise that I'm not looking at this from a YouTuber's greedy, I need a coin sponsor point of view. I'm looking at this from a, I play FIFA a lot. I love FIFA and I want the best for FIFA Ultimate Team, but this isn't it. This is not the way forward, in my opinion. Some people are happy with what EA are doing. Most people are unhappy. If you go to EA Sports FIFA timeline, I'll also link this tweet, right? So they tweet out FIFA Ultimate Team in the transfer market, ensuring players have a fair, secure and fun experience, and then they link it. The, the replies, faggot bitch, suck my ass, fuck off, just told you I don't care, bullshit, 
Nobody's been able to use it for weeks, just quit. It's not a fun experience to be honest. Okay lads, bullshit, my players are worth half now. Inform Cole 75 minimum, man of the match Delft 15. What? Fuck out of here, fix the iOS market, fuck you, coon. It's such a fun experience listing players that don't fucking sell. Why is nothing working? Uh, some foreign language. It's only fair because nobody can sell everything so it's a level platform. Pez is better than your shit game. You just said fun. Fun and EA don't fucking combine. Fuck you and the bitch that made you. Happy fucking birthday fuck. Old fucking bullshit. You're in the best game ever. Kill yourself faggots. Pretty sure no one is having a fun experience now. It literally makes me want to take my Xbox and throw it off the tallest building in Austin. Just saying. Fuck you. Bunch of slags. I'm almost certain that EA is run by the mayor of fucking Downsville. And the list just goes on of negative, negative, hateful, spiteful comments. How can EA think that, th that this is working? How? How can they think that this is what's right? There's not one single person there that's like, sick, thanks, that's actually awesome. No one. Because, okay, ma mainly the vocal minority are the negative people. I understand that through being a YouTuber and through expressing, experiencing a lot of hate through my years. But it's never been this bad. If you go to EA's YouTube page, when they used to upload a video, they would get some dislikes, mostly likes, not 85 to 90% likes, some dislikes. Now it's the other way around. They get thousands upon thousands of dislikes on their YouTube videos. They can't be happy with this. They can't be looking at this and be like, don't worry about it. You know, it will blow over. As long as we get more FIFA points, we'll be fine. Because that's what it, that's what it is. They can't seriously be looking at this thinking that this is working and have not have thought of all the things that I've discussed today as possible issues going forwards. If they really think that using the price ranges to bring player prices down is gonna fix everything, they are genuinely, genuinely retarded. Like they genuinely don't know what they're doing to the point where if they implement this in FIFA 16, it's gonna be a write-off of a game just like FIFA 15 has now become. I still enjoy playing FIFA Ultimate Team, don't get me wrong, because I love the gameplay side of things, but everything outside of the gameplay side of things, the markets, the packs, the, the, the glitches with not being able to access foot, the getting disconnected, the DNF problems, all the problems we've suffered this year, are the real issue with why people don't play fuck, why people hate fuck. Not because of the gameplay and the glitches within the gameplay, because gameplay glitches happen in every single game all the time. It's the other things that are the biggest problem from us. So from a fuck user, from somebody who wants the best out of this game, this is not the way forwards. And uh, I said this on stream as well, and I'm gonna end the video with this. Um, it will make me so happy if like coin sponsors aren't gone right now, okay? They are iffy. Some coin sites are up, some coin sites are down. Some YouTubers are still promoting, some YouTubers aren't. There is, it's iffy. It could make a comeback, it could disappear. If it disappears, I will be so happy when the market and the game is still completely fucked and EA can't turn around and blame YouTubers and blame coin sellers and blame coin sites. And I will be so happy to sit here and say, I told you so. I can't wait for the day that happens. It will make me so happy when it all goes wrong and we're still not promoting coins. And um, that's gonna be the end of the video. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.